Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So we discussed the conflict between the sense of God that the heart intuates and the sense of God given by scripture. Now that particular conflict spills over to the communication of God as well, which is the scripture and what we understand intuitively. And we find that there is a great tension between what the scripture says to us about the rules and regulations and what the inner being says to us. I mean, it doesn't sit well talking of slaves, beating wives, amputating limbs, flogging people in public, so on and so forth. These appear to be below human dignity, draconian, inhumane. But on the other hand, well, the scripture prescribes them on behalf of God. So surely God knows what is better for the body, how best to regulate the body, to allow for the awakening of the spirit and the emergence of the spirit. Nonetheless, it doesn't sit well intuitively. How do we resolve this? This again is due to the lack of understanding of the distinction between spirit and between body and the scripture addressing the body. The first thing is this, that the scripture was given 1,400 years ago as far as the Muslims are concerned. The previous scriptures were given before that. The scriptures are stagnant. They are confined to a point in time and to a existential context. Whereas the human condition is a salient one. It's dynamic. We are always experiencing. We are always growing. So when we look at this, we will see, well, there is a difference between the two. Intuition at the time when the scripture was revealed was in sync with the scripture. Scripture has remained firm in the time of its revelation. Human beings have progressed. Now intuition is no longer in sync. It seems to be undignified, the law of the scripture. How do we make this more digestible? Well, let's talk about abrogation in the Quran. Verses of the Quran abrogate other verses. And the Quran attests to this. مَا نَنْسَخْ مِنْ آيَةٍ أَوْ نُنْسِيهَا نَعْتِي بِخَيْرٍ مِنْهَا أَوْ مِثْلِهَا We do not abrogate a verse or cause it to be effaced from memory, but that we replace it with one better than it. Now, this dynamics involved within abrogation, what are they? If a rule is given, and then later on it's abrogated, then that rule was not eternal, was it? It served a purpose. After serving its purpose, it is replaced by one better. Why is this replacing taking better? Because the human community is maturing, evolving and growing. Yet the abrogated verse is still retained within the Quran. So it means that its form has lost its force. But the essence still is true and the new form replaces it. Now, if that has been a Quranic phenomenon, and if we were to contrast the Quran with the prior, prior scriptures, then the Quran does not have any mention of stoning to death, whereas the previous scriptures had stoning to death. The only reason for this is that the human community moved on its sense of dignity, morality, was at a level where killing people by stoning was seen as an undignified act, and hence the Quran omits it. So if that has been a historical phenomena, that human mind has been growing, it's been evolving, 
And the scriptures have been modifying their formulation of the law or morals in accordance with the state of human growth. Then the simple question that is asked here is that has human community not advanced since the revelation of the Quran? In which case we will have to say that the essence of the regulations pertaining to the bodily aspect is intact, but the form needs to be tweaked. And intuition actually sees that the form has become unproductive or even counterproductive. The simple reason there is that the scriptures were addressing bodily properties at a given time. The mind is always evolving and therefore the rules pertaining to the body in order to bring about the emergence of the spirit has to always evolve as well and hence we are finding this tension. So if the human community was evolving during the process of revelation of the Quran and if the human community was evolving between Moses and Jesus and between Jesus and the Prophet Muhammad then is it reasonable to say that the human community has stopped evolving since then? The answer is no, it has evolved. We'll give an example here again. 30 odd years ago, we did not see a problem in women getting less, less pay than men for performing the same task. 30 years on, we are intuitively feeling that this is unjust. Now, why are we feeling it is unjust? Have we evolved? Well, physically we are still the same. But morality has become refined. Why has morality become refined? What is going on here that is causing us to change and tweak and question our judgments and making them more in line with fairness. What is happening actually is that the spirit within is awakening constantly. We are a product of the breath of God and we are constantly yearning and reaching out to God and that is then generating our inner evolutionary motion. So when I say intuition, what do I mean by intuition? What I mean by intuition is the inner sense of understanding our existential status. Now, how does intuition work in this context? If somebody says something to us and it sits well and resonates from within ourselves, that is what I call intuition. It is beyond or it is other than descriptions or propositions in terms of whether they are simple or complex, they are by presence or acquisition. It is another, it's an existential state. So if I were to say today, God cannot have chosen ones, it would be very unjust in the sense that God favors one party over another party and gives them privileges and gives them the right to transgress upon others without any blame. Intuition will say, yes, this is true. God cannot be like that. Similarly, if I were to say, it is not right that God would say that we take slaves. It is below human dignity. All humans are equal. Intuition will say, yes, this is true. This is right. If I were to say, it is really not fair that if a woman does the same task as a man, that she should be paid less than a man. Intuition will say, yes, that is true. If I were to say, you can't beat your wife just because you feel she's disobedient, this is below human dignity. Intuition will say, yes, it's true. If I were to say, if a woman is an equal contributor to the household expenses, it does not make any sense that she doesn't have the right to divorce. And a man can keep her captive. He will say, yes, it is true. If I say she shouldn't get 
one share of inheritance as opposed to two shares of a man when she is contributing the same amount. Intuition will say, yes, it's true. So then there is a conflict between intuition and revelation or scripture. This is squarely due to conflating and not distinguishing the spirited side from the bodily side. Religion has two aspects. One is God orientation and one is disciplining the body. The God orientation part is the essential feature of religion, is the real religion. The regulation part is the bodily feature of religion that has come to regulate the body in a particular time, region, specific context. As time moves on and the spirited being begins to evolve, the bodily part needs to tag along. But the scripture is set. We need to distinguish that the essence of scripture needs to be tweaked and retweaked in order for it to allow the emergence of the spirit through regulating the bodies in accordance with their aptitudes and capacities. So the whole conflict between intuition and scripture dissipates once we understand that the bodily part of the scripture is confined to a particular time in history. Whereas the essence of the scripture pertains to the growing, evolving, emerging and refining spirit. And the way we can understand that the scripture has become inconsistent with the evolving human condition is that we revert to our intuition. That does this really make sense? Is it just and right and fair? Is it adding to the growth? Is it befitting human dignity? And from there, we can resolve many problems. So there again, here, distinction between spirit and body is extremely useful as a tool to resolve the conflict between what is felt within and what is written within the scripture in terms of its form, not its essence. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.